Congratulations, you've started the video. How did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> that's what it was. Oh, you well can, that's good to know. You can start it with your hand. I wonder if you can shut it off. Here? Here? Right here? No, because we want to show people stuff. Whatever. Just, just let it go. Okay. So we officially have taken our maiden voyage down to our homestead in Georgia. Took us how many days? I don't even four? remember. Four? Yeah. Four? I think four we days. got here. Let's see. We left uh, almost five because we left Sunday night mm -hmm. and we got down here Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So it was almost, it, it was, it was five in total. How do you feel about the drive? Stressful. <laughs> it's stressful. I think we still have some things to tweak in the bus to make it easier to be able to move about without having to rearrange our whole life. Yeah. So I think, I mean, that did, so the bus travels best at about 55 miles an hour. So you have a lot of traffic moving around. It gets a little bit hard to change lanes. I mean, it is a big bus. It was my first time really driving anything of that size. So I think that was a little bit stressful. Mm -hmm. um, the bus is from 2000. So I was unsure how well it was going to fully function because we hadn't done a long trip on it. We've done a couple of little short Welcome. We'll talk about her in a second. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we took a couple little short stops, uh, you know, trips with it, and it did fine, but I was I was worried about it. So I think some of that was more me being worried about it than anything to do with the bus or any of the other stuff itself. So, but overall... But it worked. Yeah, it Everything was fine. went fine. We didn't have any major issues. We didn't have mm -hmm. any things shut down or crash, no problems. Um, it all went pretty smooth. I drove um, our separate vehicle, which was uh, really nice to just have that second vehicle on hand. And then we would park during the day, Chris would work, I'd run errands or work on my own stuff. And then we'd drive again at night when he was done with work, which worked out really well. Yeah, it was pretty decent. Um, it was a little weird setting up the, so we, we use a generator to keep our power supply uh, going. So, it was a little weird when we were parked after on a generator and depending on the areas we we're in um like at the rest stations and stuff like that it made me a little worried about it mm -hmm. it was all fine nobody ever came and bugged us or anything along those lines so it was good but uh again i think that was my own worries about just stuff not being right you know or having somebody come try to we haven't had any any issues at all though. It was it was good and I'm very happy we're down here. So we parked up front of the property to begin with so that we could get some things cleaned up. And before we even had a chance to start cleaning, a cat <laughs> approached us. There's a guy walking down the road. There's this cat trotting behind him, just this little kitten. She was so cute. That was the next morning. That was the next morning. Like so we parked late at morning. night and early the next morning we got up. It was one of the first things I remember even seeing or doing when we got up. Mm -hmm. And she was just like trotting up and we said, oh, that's so cute. And she go he goes, I don't know. She just started following me and she just veered off onto our property and never left. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> She's super cute. Um, we've been here for about two weeks now. We named her Demeter after the um, Greek goddess of grain, since we'll be starting our little homestead. It's okay. I'll, I'll put all sorts of really adorable pictures of her right here and send some video. She's, um, they, we think about five months old. We did take her to the vet. She had fleas and she had worms, so we had to get her treated. And right now we're trying to get her kind of used to our other pets. She's getting along with the dog really well, but the other two cats, it's gonna be a work in progress. Um, They're doing not too bad. I mean, we've only introduced them for about really three days now. She's been outdoors most of the time. It's been nice weather down here, so we haven't been too concerned about her. We wanna make her an indoor outdoor cat is our, our hope, but. So that she can still like mouse and it is where she has been her whole life. So we're trying to give her um, some appropriate space to grow um, without being um, a menace to our natural habitat. Um, and also make sure we get her, we're gonna get her spayed next month so that we don't have any irresponsible kittens. So we are trying to be a, responsible farm cat owners since this is now our first farm animal yeah and the south definitely is different in regards to stray animals we've seen several of them already around here uh there's a couple dogs in the area 
to kind of avoid us if uh, if they would come by us at some point we'd end up having just 20 animals there's a very good so. chance we're going to become an impromptu like foster shelter. home animal yeah. rescue yeah we definitely have fostered a couple of animals just that we found up north so i have a feeling it's going to be potentially similar down here as well <laughs> well and the corner we're on we've talked to a couple of neighbors and they said people kind of like to it's kind of a quiet corner um, outside of the the town so people like to kind of come over in this area and drop animals mm -hmm. so i have a feeling we're going to end up with them but you know we'll keep you guys posted on those kind of things as as they come as up as they come up yeah yep. and go ahead. well i was just going to say just in terms of like we've been here two weeks now and it's nice so one of our biggest challenges coming onto the property is there's a lot of bamboo and the bamboo has taken over quite mm -hmm. a bit. So we are working on a couple of different solutions in order to manage that bamboo. Uh, bamboo is great because it can be a great privacy fencing. It's also great at making sure that you don't get like erosion and have the ground kind of wash away. So having it down by the springs and keeping the springs in place is really nice. Um, it's also great for building material. It's lightweight, it's easy to treat, it's easy to cut down, and it grows really fast. Some of the downfalls is it is very invasive. It will strangle out anything else around it. It will block light from any of the ground, native ground plants around it. So um, it's definitely gotten really out of hand on this particular property and we think it's most responsible and in our best interest to cut it back and get it under control. So some of the things that we've done is we've started cutting it back. Chris has been cutting back a little bit every day. And then during the day, I've been taking off the branches and processing it so that we can um, try and use it for building material. It is a new experience for us, so we're not necessarily well-rounded in it. But um, one of the options that I saw online was to put them in five gallon buckets of water and borax and let them sit for a number of weeks. The idea is, since it is a plant, it is technically a grass, it's right? Grass, yes. <laughs> um, is that just like you would put flowers in a vase and if you've ever done the experiment where you have like daisies and you put food coloring in them and it sucks up the food coloring and turns them different colors, is that with the borax in the water, it will actually suck the borax up to the stem and it will eventually treat and harden the bamboo. If it is left untreated, it does get rather brittle over time, so it's not a good long-lasting building material, and we want to make sure that if we're spending the time to build something, it is lasting for at least a couple of years. Um, we've also reached out to the zoo, if you want to yeah. talk about that process a little bit. Yeah, so one of the things um, for pandas, they're kind of picky eaters, so I reached out to the Atlanta Zoo. They will go anywhere within like 150 miles basically of the zoo to find pandas stuff they'll eat so it does take a couple weeks um so i'm not expecting to really hear anything for a, a month or so but if they want to come out and check the bamboo out and if they want some we'll leave a grove here we're probably not leaving a grove here anyways but we'll leave it here for them to come harvest as they wish and they can harvest really as much as they want i think we currently have over two acres of bamboo um, and I think we want to keep maybe a half acre for ourselves. Half acre to an acre, depending. I think I think it'll probably be like a half acre as a grove, and then we'll have some areas as privacy, like the privacy fencing. fencing yeah. yeah, so we'll have probably an acre in total, is my guess. Um, and they could they'd be able to come harvest it. The big thing that they have is that they don't want herbicides or pesticides used, um, which this property hasn't had anything here for and at least. Untouched for seven or eight years at, at least. least at least then probably probably several years before that i would guess but this... at the very least because that's when the last house that was on the property was demoed and we're yeah. going to assume that that property was and we're going to assume that property was um unoccupied for a little while before that yeah um chris has also taken out the solar panels and we've got those hooked up to the batteries to try and get some solar we've got some outdoor lighting that also has um solar on it and we've been working on cleaning some stuff up, um, like getting the bamboo out of the way. We put in our first tiny little winter garden. Yep. We've got our fire pit area um, cleared out, which is also a lot of bamboo cutting. <laughs> yeah. Um, we I've, got a partial greenhouse. Yes, we did buy a greenhouse. Um, it was one that someone started and now they're going overseas. So we bought it off of Facebook Marketplace. 
Um, it's partially finished. We're going to have to finish it the rest of the way. So he took it apart for us, showed it. Sh so he took it apart for us, showed us how it goes together, and then we'll be um, finishing it. And he never finished it, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge on that end too. Yeah, we have a couple pieces of wood to replace on it, but it was really super cheap. So and it kind of gives us a platform. To, to start with a place to start yeah, yeah. Sure. and then we have a bunch of like sliding doors and stuff like that so big windows basically that we're going to try figuring out how to retrofit on there and i'm sure we're going to try i think documenting a lot more of this stuff now that we're down here and i think we can take it a little bit slower than we have been in the past because this last year was a whirlwind it, it's been rush 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 just to get stuff going to to bring us into places um you know, we do have, you can kind of hear some noise going past. We do have 22 acres here, but right now we're on the very front side of our property. Because so. it's the only thing we have access to and could clean. And so we put a table and chairs here. We'll show you a little bit of that um, from an estate sale and have just started cleaning the front of the property, which is going to be where we hopefully put our orchard. Yep. Yeah, this, this should be, this is going to be the orchard. We just have to figure out how we want to clean. There's a lot of super old mature trees on this property. There's a lot of old um, pecan trees. There's really huge oak trees, stuff like that. So we're gonna kind of plant it around those trees that are already here, because I don't want to cut any of the big hardwoods down. We have some smaller scrubby stuff that we'll cut down and we'll make room for, And but uh, we have to really plant it because in summer they're gonna be in, you know, in, in full, yeah. They're gonna have full canopies. Yep. So we have to figure out where can we put apple trees, where can we put plums. Um, you know, blueberries, stuff like that, like versus the current landscape. Yep. So. so I think maybe one of our next videos will actually be mapping and planning that and maybe sharing one of our blueprints or plans. I think that could be cool. We could probably do that. And yeah. Yeah, we could map it out really. We made a list of basic. some of the things we can pick up locally. So we were going to start making maps of what we want to cut down and what we want to add. Yeah. So that might be it next on the, on the rapport. And, and even right now for fall, my understanding is planting like apples and pears and stuff like that for fall is actually okay. So I think we're going to probably try getting some of them planted yet. A couple of them put in the ground. Yeah, this year, just so they can get started. Because we really want, it, it does take a couple years for the orchards to take off. So we really want to get them started in as early. soon as possible. A couple of the other things I want to make sure we get started early is... Um, Asparagus roots are one that I really want to get going and we're thinking about starting some mushroom logs because those can take anywhere from 12 to 24 months to get going. Yep. So we might get those started and um, leave them in the greenhouse to kind of take care of themselves or Probably put them under a good, the a good area of canopy. It really depends on the mushrooms. Some mushrooms are a little bit fussier and some are really easy. So we might try some easy to medium mushrooms. Yeah, one of the ironic things was we were just driving down the road the other day and we found uh lion's mane just, a huge one just randomly on the side of the road we were talking about it and i i went past and i kind of saw it out of the corner of my vision i came back and got noel and i'm like hey come for come with me for a ride i think i saw a mushroom and sure enough it was a lion's mane i think i saw a mushroom what a ride <laughs> if you're following us on tiktok you will see um some mushroom videos i also found some great um, I think I found some great turkey tail in the woods. I'm double checking some of my sources. As with all foraging, we really, really encourage if you're a newbie forager or even a mid-level forager, you have to make sure you're getting multiple identifications. So whenever I'm picking something new, like the lion's mane, which I was fairly certain that I had the right mushroom, but I still went to a more experienced forager and said, hey, what does this look like? And another forager that was on my level and was like, hey, this looks like this, right? And then checked some online sources as well. So even when we're really positive, we have a positive ID, we go and double and well, triple check. It's so important. And it's so funny because rarely, rarely does like Google Lens actually give you an answer. And I took a photo of it and right away it was lion's mane, it said. So I'm like, yep, yep. Because normally it will like be like, it's of this genus, but it, yeah. it was dead on. So we're it was um, good. And we're still alive, so. We are still alive. We ate it and fed it to a friend. <laughs> we took the we, double risk. We haven't heard from him yet today, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check in, make sure he's still ticking. <laughs> so. All right, do you guys want to go on a tour? Let's do it. So this was our first homestead purchase. I found this at an estate sale. I thought Chris was going to kill me for asking for something that was solid cement. 
but um, one of the things that we want to do with the property is make it really beautiful and make it accessible for my line of work outside of the actual homestead, which is doing film and photography stuff. So I want to make some beautiful places that can be used as sets. If we look over here, you've got some of the bamboo I was talking about. So these are all right now sitting in um, water that has borax in it. Actually, probably should be refilling these two. These two are my oldest and these two are my newest. So this one and this one don't even have water in them yet. I just strip the branches and prop them up and then I'll be adding water and borax within the next couple of days. If we actually spin all the way around over here, this is all just my off, my extra cutting, all the branches and things that I cut off, which we did use to make um, a little bit of um, fencing, well, like a kind of a container that we're going to be using for our compost. So if you want to follow me over here, we This is just one of our piles of bamboo. Yes. This is, and... You can kind of see behind Noel, that is our bamboo forest back there. You can see how tall it is compared so to her. This is our compost bin. Um, I tried to do a little bit of a wobbling style, which I've never done. Being that the branches are so thin and that they've got leaves on them, it was a little bit chaotic, but so far it's been holding up really well. And I figure when the leaves die off of it, it's just going to add to the compost. And I can also add more wobbling to it. I also do have some of this vineage that we dug up. I have a bunch of it wrapped up over here so I can use it for basket weaving or I can use it for fencing or outdoor projects or whatever I want but um, I am very much a waste none want none person so I decided to wrap it all up and set it to the side. I am going to turn the tour over to Chris so he can show you some of the other cool projects that we're working on. So all the bamboo that was over here that Noelle used both for this and that she's treating a lot of it comes from this section right here. The bamboo is actually up to about here when we got here. Since then we've cut it back probably about 25-30 feet and we're going to continue moving back so that we can get into these this tree line back here. We want to get I want to get some of these trees opened up because I just really love them. Um, Noel built this little garden and kind of fenced it in. This is going to be our winter garden. We're going to see how it goes. It's all cold weather tolerant plants. Uh, it's just plant? beets and lettuce, oh, just a couple of things just to start growing and testing out the soil. And then we're also going to have the greenhouse, which will be over here, kind of where the compost was, kind of in front of that area. We're going to put the greenhouse, because that should get a lot of sun throughout the day. And then we'll get into more of our probably other fruiting. I really want to do like strawberries in there for winter, because I would love to have winter strawberries. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> We have six solar panels, or 250 watts each. I just have them laid out. They get quite a bit of sun. I want to move back this bamboo yet, because in the morning, so this is south, so in the morning, it doesn't get a ton yet until probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. That's when it really starts to kind of kick in on the power. We do have a generator to keep us up. Um, I run the generator for about one gallon of gas, maybe two a day, so it's about four to six hours usually, and that will keep our batteries completely full. The other thing we kind of worked on, and it's a little bit dark, so it's kind of hard to tell, is this area back here. This is gonna kind of get all cleared out. There is probably a good acre of bamboo back over here as well. And watch that stuff right there. So this we're going to clear all completely out so that these bigger trees can get more light. The pecan trees will actually get more nutrients to grow, so hopefully we can start harvesting off of them. We just put a little fire pit back here. We're going to start burning up some of our, our leaves and extra things like that. Have a couple fires at night. I do believe at some point in time there was a building here because of these tree line right here. And we also found a old buried phone line that's no longer hooked up. So I believe that the back before the other previous house was on here, there was actually one back here as well. And if you guys haven't, we've talked about her earlier, but that is Demeter, our newest addition. She's kind of a wild one. Hey! <laughs> You're very cute. 
<laughs> That's about it for us. Um, I'll try to get this edited up and put up within a day or two so you guys aren't that far behind. Um, we really appreciate you tuning in and we really appreciate your sh we really appreciate your patience. I know that the videos have not been coming out as regularly as we would like them to and maybe not as regularly as you would like to see them, but we're trying to get them out um, more post haste now. So um, we're gonna have a lot of projects coming up. So we're gonna try doing videos of those projects as well for you guys. And uh, we'll just keep you informed and hope you enjoy the journey with us. We're trying to live a slower, happier life. So hopefully that'll give us more time to create more quality content for all of you.